So in addition to the nervous system, the enteric nervous system, there are also substances that help affect digestion. And we can divide them into substances that affect enzyme secretion as well as um, hydrogen ex excretion, and also substances that affect GI motility. So we're going to look at the first one first, H plus and enzyme secretion. And the very first enzyme substance is gastrin. Gastrin is released from G cells, so G, gastrin, G for gastrin. Um, that's in the gastric antrum as well as the duodenum. So that's easy enough. And the function of gastrin is to improve digestion. That is its main goal. And it does that in two ways. The first way is it increases H plus secretion in the stomach. And the second way it improves digestion is it improves motility. Improves gastric motility to get things through the GI tract. So why will you why will you want this? When would you want to have improved digestion? Well obviously it's after you just ate. That's the best time to improve your digestion. So the trigger for this, which is at the re regulation section, would be stomach distension, so that's food in your stomach, or just the presence of peptides or amino acids. That's just the basic nutrients of the food you ate. And finally, vagal stimulation, which we talked about is parasympathetic. Remember, parasympathetic causes rest and digest, stimulation of digestion, so these will all trigger gastrin release. Next hormone, or next substance is somatostatin. It's, uh, it's released from D cells in the pancreatic islets and the gut mucosa. Somatostatin, its function is a regulatory feedback hormone. So what it does is it decreases secretion of most GI hormones and it decreases gallbladder contraction. So it slows down your GI tract, slows down release of digestive enzymes. Because of that, I like to call it somatostopin. That helps you. Please use it if it doesn't ignore me, but somatostopin, regulatory feedback hormone. And you have this so that we don't have our GI tract just going out of control and becoming super modal, and then you would have diarrhea all day and it would not be fun. And the trigger for this one is gastric acid. And the gut mucosa you, you leaves the stomach, gastric acid hits the mucosa, you get some somatostatin to slow down the digestion, the digestive process. Next is cholecystokinin. If you, um, chole here stands for uh, the gallbladder. So it's things like cholecystitis, cholelithiasis. We'll learn about that later, but all refers to the gallbladder. We can shorten this to CCK. And CCK is made from eye cells in the small intestine. And the function of CCK is fat digestion and absorption. And the way it does that is it increases gallbladder and pancreatic secretions and we need these secretions from these two organs to digest fat and absorb the fat so that's one the one of its uh, actions and the other action is to decrease gastric emptying now you may be a little confused here and wondering why would we want to decrease gastric emptying if we want to digest our fat and absorb it why would we want to keep it all in the stomach and the answer to this is because fat digestion takes a lot of time. It's a slow process and our intestines can only handle so much fat at the same time. So you want to modulate the amount of fat that's getting into the, into the small intestine. So you do that by decreasing gastric emptying. So the trigger for this, what would trigger fat digestion absorption? Well, the trigger would be the presence of fat, so fatty acids and amino acids trigger CCK release. Next is secretin, released from the S cells in the small intestine. And the function of this is to neutralize, let's see, let me erase this, is to neutralize hydrogen ions in the small intestine. And why would you do that? Because while it's nice to have the, the, the hydrogen ions in the stomach, which would uh, help break down proteins, you don't want it in the small intestine because you have all these digestive enzymes in the small intestine and they don't work well with low pH. So you need to neutralize all that H+. And you do that through secretin. And there are two ways that secretin does this. It increases bicarb, 
secretion from the gallbladder and the pancreas, and it will also decrease H plus secretion in the stomach. So what would trigger this? Why would you want to neutralize H plus? When would that need to happen? Well, obviously when acid hits the small intestine, so that's a nice trigger, and fatty acids and acid in the duodenum. So finally, our last one is glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide. And that name pretty much tells you everything you need to know. It's released from the K cells in the small intestine. Another quick thing is these are all in the small intestine, so it's easy to remember. So glucose-dependent. That means it's released when glucose is there. And insulinotropic, which means it helps, uh, helps insulin release. So that already tells us its action and its regulation. So insulin release, and it also decreases gastric H plus secretion. And the trigger would be glucose, fatty acids, amino acids. And the main thing is the glucose triggering insulin release so that your glucose isn't just sitting in the blood. It triggers insulin release. Insulin causes the glucose to be taken up by the cells. Okay, so that would be it for the stuff that affects H plus and enzyme secretion. Let's go and take a look at stuff that affects motility and appetite. Very first one, motilin from M cells, so super easy. And as you can tell from the name, it increases GI motility through the initiation of migrating motor complexes. And when is this triggered? This is actually triggered in the fasting state, which doesn't make the most sense to me. But if you think about your real life and when in your stomach growling, it kind of makes sense. Because your stomach, when it growls, it's thanks to these migrating motor complexes move, like moving your gut and all the air and little contents in there. It's causing like gurgling sounds that you hear. And that happens when you're, forget, when you're hungry, when you're, when you're in a fasting state. And so that fasting state tr triggers this motilin and it what it does is it causes this motility to just to clear out your, your GI tract, clear out all that other, all that crap in there so that you can have uh, new room for new food. So the next one is called vasoactive intestinal polypeptide VIP and it's secreted from parasympathetic ganglia in the GI tract. And so VIP, its action is to increase intestinal water and electrolyte secretion in the gut lumen. And when you have all this water and electrolytes that's going to lubricate your feces and it's going to increase your motility. The other thing to remember is there's, I don't know if you've heard about this yet, this is a VIP OMA. So OMA means a, a tumor, so this is a pancreatic tumor that secretes VIP. And it classically has something called the WDHA syndrome. So WD stands for watery diarrhea just because you, you're secreting all that water into your lumen. So it's going to get diarrhea and it's going to be super watery. And then the H stands for hypokalemia, A stands for achloridia. That's because you're going to be low in both of these electrolytes because you're also secreting all of that into the lumen. So that's WDHA syndrome from VIPoma. The trigger for this, because this is basically, VIP basically increases your motility, is abdominal distension and vagal stimulation. So abdominal stimulation, uh, abdominal distension means you need to get rid of, move, move all that food out of your GI tract and vagal stimulation again is rest and digest. So next, nitric oxide. Remember what nitric oxide does in generally. Nitric oxide, remember, relaxes your smooth muscle. And remember, where is smooth muscle in the GI tract in your gut? Remember, it's, it's that whole layer, the muscularis externa, and that's it's what helps you have your, your motility and your uh, GI peristalsis. So you relax that, you decrease your GI motility. And you're gonna de so this one actually decreases. Keep, excuse me. So this one decreases motility. These two increase motility. And so it decreases it by smooth muscle relaxation. Next is leptin, it's made from fat cells. Leptin decreases appetite, so leptin makes you lose weight. And because it's released in fat cells, the more fat cells you have, the more leptin you get released. It's proportional. So there's a long-term effect to decrease appetite because it's not like you lose your fat in an instant. Next, final, last and not, not, but not least is ghrelin, made from gastric cells. So ghrelin is the opposite of leptin. It increases your appetite. I remember which one does which, because ghrelin from gastric cells make you gain weight. And the trigger for this is a fasting state. So when you're fasting, you, get, you become hungry, you have increased appetite, and that is thanks to ghrelin. 
So that's it for all our substances that we that will regulate the GI tract. And we're going to review again how these are regulated. So we're going to talk about the different triggers first and see how the body will respond. So looking at stomach distension, it might be, help you to just review the, the substances again first, get a better grasp of it. But once you're ready for this, so stomach distension, how will the body respond? Remember, our body will want to increase digestion to move all that, move all that food through the GI tract. And the way it does that is it's going to increase motility in your stomach and intestine through gastrin and VIP respectively. Okay, so the next one we're going to see is high acidity. Remember, our body will react to that. How? Well, we don't want, it's going to decrease acidity in the small intestine because you want to improve your enzyme function. So the way it does that is going to, do you remember what two substances? It's going to release somatostatin and secretin. Remember, somatostatin, what was its function? Remember, somatostopin is the regulatory GI hormone, uh, blocking release of all the other stuff. And secretin, how does secretin work? Secretin increases duodenal bicarb, release the bicarb from the pancreas and the gallbladder. Next is glucose. Your body will want to do with glucose is it wants to have cells uptake that glucose. So it's going to need insulin to do that. And it gets more insulin to, thanks to the GIP release, the gluco, um, glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide. Next is fatty acids and amino acids. So, what will your body want to do with these? Obviously, it wants to digest and absorb these, and it's going to do that through three different hormones. So fatty acids and amino acids both trigger CCK and GIP. Uh, CCK, remember, was for that gallbladder contraction so that your fats get digested. And then your, fa your fatty acids trigger release of secretin. Amino acids trigger gastrin. Finally, vagal stimulation. What is the vagal stimulation? What system is that? What is that? Nervous system? Remember, that's the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. So vagal stimulation, what will that do? Well, it's going to increase GI motility through the increasing gastrin and VIP. So pretty much similar, vagal stimulation, stomach distension, both increase motility through gastrin and VIP. So that is it for all our regulatory substances of the GI tract.